Hi, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Wednesday, September 15th. Uh, again, it's great to be with you. Uh, I hope all is well with you and yours. Uh, our focus is, is um, really passing on the hope we have into tomorrow, to the next generation. Uh, and and uh, we see this throughout the Bible. In, in, there's psalm after psalm that talks about um, passing it on to the next generation. It's never... And it's never, uh, I, I think this is different from what we would call uh, um, um, evangelism or, or sharing, evangel means the good news of Jesus, or sharing the good news of Jesus with folks that don't, don't know it. This is, this is more um, training uh, the next generation of believers, and, and that many times is chronological with children, but, but also those who come to faith no, no matter what their age, right? And, and uh uh, so to uh, uh, and we we grow them even as we grow ourselves more and more in the understanding of of who we are and who they are in God and, and the Spirit of God works through His Word to strengthen them. Uh, it, it's it's kind of um, uh, it, it's it's kind of like yesterday when we talked about that Psalm and it referred to the Law, which is the whole Old Testament scriptures of God and how they were going to pass this on to the next generation so they would know God, know Him personally, right? Uh, and rejoice in him and so forth. Uh, again, we see that in a number of Psalms, the idea of passing it on to the next generation. Uh, I, I kind of uh, uh, draw the parallel, I think, to um, uh, the Matthew 28, which says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Uh, so we, we tell folks about Jesus, we baptize them, um, and uh, whether they're our own children or whoever they might be, we, we then look to grow the next generation uh, uh, because after all, we have everything we need in Jesus. We have the sure and certain hope that we live in him every day and finally forever. Uh, and so we're about growing the next generation in that reality with, with everything that God has given us. Our time, we should all be involved in this somehow. With our time, with our abilities, um, with our prayers, uh, and, and certainly with uh, with our money as well. Uh, so, so this is something that really hit me as I looked at it, and that's what I'm sharing this week. Uh, today, uh, I want to look at a section from Mark that has all that for a number of years now has a kind of been an aha for me. Jesus, uh, in in within a half a chapter, so a few verses, he he hits the idea of of children and young Christians, in a sense, young in the Lord, uh, three different times. It's, it's really powerful, and, and I mentioned this last Sunday, but I, I thought we'd look at that again. It's found in Math, uh, Mark nine and ten. Okay, so. So this is Mark 9, in, uh, it starts in verse 33, it says, They came to Capernaum, so this is Jesus and the disciples. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. So they had this running argument, right? They all wanted to be the greatest. Uh, and um, Jesus knew what they were arguing about, right? He, was, he knows everything. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. So Jesus said, Hey, uh, you want to be great in the kingdom? You got to be the servant of all. So what does this look like? Pretty good question. Huh? Okay, well, hmm, what, what does it look like? Well, this is where Jesus went with that, the answer to that question. He took a little child, let him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. So whoever welcomes a little child. Now, what does the word welcome mean? Just, us. Oh, I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm going to go about my life now. Is that, is that what welcome means here? Or does welcome mean as part of the family and as, as, as everything we can do to grow you in the family? You see, it, it's, it's, it's a family thing. It's a passing it on thing. This is what the greatness in the kingdom looks like for us to be about passing it on to the next generation. And again, I don't want to limit it to children, but the net, whoever comes behind us in the faith, right? Uh, we, we are called to pass it on in a, in a way that we can teach them to observe everything I have commanded you. And of course, we're always going in that as our, uh, in ourselves as well, right? Uh, and then in, in this section, it's so interesting, uh, Jesus kind of gets, I, I look at it uh, as somebody kind of interrupting where he wants to go. Uh, the disciples are saying, hey, this guy is doing this. Uh, uh, shall, shall we do, he's, he's healing people in your name. Shall we tell him to stop? And Jesus, no, if he's not against us, he's for us. And you have all this. And then Jesus kind of gets back to, I think, what he wanted to talk about. And he says, and if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, 
it would be better for him to throw into this, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. So he's he's going back to this idea of, of what? Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. And in a sense, we welcome God himself as we as we speak and work with these young Christians, right? And, and do everything we can to provide for their growth in the faith. Uh, and, and it says, on the other hand, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, and, and, and the, um, the, the, the word here means you become a stumbling block. Well, how do you become a stumbling block? Is it just stuff that we do or stuff that we don't do? How do we become a stumbling block as, as, as the people of God? Uh, we, um, is, is it that we don't work uh, to empower parents as we should? Is it that we um, don't have the things necessary for people to easily take the next step and grow in the faith no matter how old they are? What does it mean? So is it something we're not doing or something we do? Yeah, and, and sometimes when we act in lovelessness and so forth, it's something we do as well. But, but, but and Jesus uses the word little ones here. He doesn't use the word children. And I, and I almost think he's, um, I almost think he's broadening it in a sense. Uh, yeah, children, uh, and we'll see when this section ends, he goes back to, to focus on children, but, but little ones, uh, all those who are still small in the faith, you see. And, and then in, in chapter 10, after, after there's some other things that, 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 that kind of leads into it, but he goes right back to children. A few verses later, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is what we should be about as the people of God. All right, as the ecclesia, the church, the gathered people of God. Certainly we should be about this individually as well. And, and, and the question is, how can we, Take the children, take the young Christians, whoever they may be, the, the, the new Christians in our arms, and bless them. How can we uh, grow them in the word, huh? in, in the law of God, the Torah? Uh, that was the whole Old Testament. Well, the whole word of God, New Testament and Old Testament. How can we teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you? You see, this is, uh, this is a job uh, uh, for all of us together and, and, and always looking forward to the next generation uh, to provide for that and, and, and to, um, to, to help with that, to, to, in a sense, make it part of our mission uh, because we already have everything. We have the sure and certain hope of life with God uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and into eternity. W would, would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, uh, you're saying something in these verses. Uh, you're calling us to this... Uh, to this idea of passing on our hope to the next generation, uh, to not simply not getting in the way, uh, but rather joining you in welcoming the children and blessing them and welcoming the young Christians and blessing them. Whatever the next generation looks like, we pray that you might show each of us what this means in our lives and that you might give us um, hearts to take that step. Pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Yet. May God be with you. Bye-bye.